Listen now of a time long past when sorcery thrived and wild adventure was forever in the offing. A power hungry king, a vengeful sorcerer, and a hero with a kick ass sword. Not for the kids, but a classic slice of cult mayhem. Albert Pion's The Sword and the Sorcerer. The land of Adan has been overthrown by the evil King Cromwell. With many years passing, the land has become an unstable shell of itself. In this time, Talon, son of the slain king, and now a mighty warrior, is vowing to take Cromwell down. In the shadows and plotting their own revenge is the sorcerer Zusha, who was raised from his tomb of blood by Cromwell to take Adan, only to be double-crossed. The princess, forced into hiding, has enlisted Talon, tasked with freeing her brother and raising an army to end Cromwell. With your army ready to strike, we shall yet crush these rebel dogs. This won't take but a moment. Man, thou art the devil. Starring as Talon, Lee Horsley, who has recently appeared in the last two Tarantino movies. Cromwell is played by the cult legend Richard Lynch. As Zusha, the much beloved actor Richard Maul, from Night Court and the voice of Two-Face in Batman the Animated Series, and Simon McCorkendale, who appeared in some of TV's biggest hits, from Falcon Crest to BBC's Casualty. The director is B-movie legend Albert Pyun. His debut feature and his biggest financial success. He would go on to make Cyborg with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And then there's... Yeah. The movie carries the credit of Brandon Chase film. In 2009, Pyun did an interview with Cool Ass Cinema and was asked about this. He did not direct any portion of the film. Brendan Chase's company put up the money, which gave them control. I was too young to know better at the time. Sword and sorcery movies tread a fine line between action adventure and horror, including those made for the family. There are a plethora of such movies that cater to the kids and the adults. However, 1982 was a hard year for any movie not named E.T. But in the shadow of Spielberg's masterpiece came a mass of legend and cult movies. The Sword and Sorcerer was a box of a smash, but panned by the critics. IMDb users weren't shy about their views. One calling it an incomprehensible steaming pile of cat feces. Another voicing my sentiments about the part in the end where Zusha reveals himself. You're seven years old. That stuff's scary. Yeah, I remember being terrified, but I was four or five at the time. One of my earliest memories was trips to the video shops late Friday afternoons. We had to wait at least six months before movies would arrive on video. So Friday nights and Saturday mornings were great times for Gen X kids. One sticks out, but unnecessarily at the same time is we had John Carpenter's The Thing, The Meaning of Life, and Eddie Murphy's Delirious, and this one. My opinion has changed. This one isn't scary for me anymore. This is a good adventure movie with some good effects, good laughs, and a fucking awesome score. 